is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, on this wet Saturday morning. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen. We are your KTR Car Guys, heard here every Saturday from 11 to noon on News 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text or comment questions at 411-923. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we've got open phones. Call, call, call. We'll answer your questions. And wet weather driving. Matt, I heard you talking about dust storms earlier in the week with Sandra Haros. Yeah, 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 well, it wasn't a week ago. We were talking about the dust storms and the wind between Phoenix and Tucson and what to do. Uh, if you get find yourself caught in a dust storm, you're pulling over off the side of the road and and uh, leaving the lights off and, and, and that type of day thing. But now, Dave, I think what we need to worry about is is our wet weather driving abilities and and skills and and uh, in our car and how it's going to handle in the wet weather. So we've got Danny on with us from the Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving out at Wild Horse Pass or Firebird Raceway, which it was formerly called. It's going to Give us some some tips on uh, talking about that and, and and how to handle your car properly. Danny, you there? Yeah, how you doing this morning? Great. So well, what? I'll tell you. You know, we, we see a, you get a lot of questions about how to you know be a better driver in general, and and everything we talk about that at the school is, is even more important in, in wet weather driving. You know, most people they're they're staring at the bumper of the car in front of them. And it's it's a really bad habit, but it's something that they've been conditioned to do in traffic. And really, the best thing you can do is elevate your vision, look a lot farther ahead, not just at the car in front of you, but what's, what's happening in front of him, so you have a better idea of, of what you need to do if something starts to change in your environment. People are starting to hit the brakes, and, and you're not paying attention. Next thing you know, you're in a panic brake mode trying to stop the car before you hit the car in front of you. If you're looking farther ahead, it'll alleviate that. That's the, probably the biggest thing we could tell anybody is to elevate your vision, look farther ahead. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of other things, too, that people tend to, to forget about. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, eliminating your distractions in your car. So you're <laughs> like not, no, you know, no, no texting phone, and stuff radio, like that? Okay. In the back seat, you know, you got to focus on driving, especially in wet weather. It's so important that you're, you're focusing on the task at hand, which is keeping that car in your control. Now, you guys have a little different definition for analog brake, analog brake system. What's your definition? So, so the ABS, it stands for Analog Brake System, but we have a different acronym for it at the school. We call it the Ability to Brake and Steer. And, and the reason we say that is because that's essentially what the ABS system was designed to do, was to maintain the driver's ability to, to change direction in that car. If you have a car that doesn't have ABS, you hit the brakes hard enough and lock the wheels up, it doesn't matter where the front wheels are pointed, the car is only going to go straight. And ABS eliminates that problem. So if if you got an older car, you're you're pumping the brakes, and modern car, you're hitting the brakes and letting it do what it does. Yeah, you definitely want to. If you're hitting the brakes hard enough for the ABS is kicking in, you know, I think these days most people know what the ABS feels like when it's when it's turned on. You know, it it, it kicks the pedal back at you. At you, it makes noise. It's uh, you know, it's pulsating. These are all you know things that are just telling you the ABS is actually working and working properly. You know, in an older car, we were always taught to, you know, pump the brakes. You know, we try to tell people, you know, you, you want to try and use threshold brakes, and you don't want the brakes to, to lock up and then unlock, lock them. You know, you try to roll on the brakes and, and keep those tires rolling, so that's when you have your friction. Well, I think the fact well, ABS is... ABS does that pump action a lot quicker, so it's way quicker than we could do it, and that, that's what allows that car to, to keep its, uh, its steering ability. Now, we like to talk about the condition of the car, and one of the things we talk about for stability is, you know, struts, struts and shocks and, tire and good tires and tire pressure. You guys are in cars racing them around all the time. Can you tell the difference just by changing tire pressure when you really got to work the car? You know, in a, in a, in a race car, you can definitely feel a difference. In a, on a street tire, uh, you feel a little bit different. It's yeah, you know, but the the tire is designed to you know on a, on a street tire. It's designed to work on the street on a, in a broad uh, spectrum of, of of ranges as far as temperature and road conditions. A, a race tire, like a racing slick, 
you know, we are specific with air pressures. You know, you want it at X amount of pressure when you go out, you bring it in, you try to adjust that pressure so it's where you wanted it again. Uh, a street tire, a, a couple pounds difference isn't going to be, be the biggest difference in the world. Worn out struts and shocks, you'll definitely feel a difference. And, uh, you know, the tires aren't going to hold the road no matter how good they are if you've got struts and shocks that are worn out and not keeping that car planted on the road. Well, yeah, I mean, Dave, we've done some driving driving deals with uh, Monroe or KYB and some of the strut manufacturers, and you can really tell the difference. And, and for a guy that's not very in tune with the seat like you are, but just your normal everyday driving, you take a car that's got worn out shocks or a blown out front strut or something like that and compare it to a newer car, someone that doesn't have them worn out, and it's incredible the amount of stopping distance that you lose, uh, the ability to, to steer the car, so that can really make a big difference as well well and danny the point you you've made is that you know the number one tip is just be aware be aware of what's around you be aware it's raining hey things are different things aren't going to work the same as what i'm used to when i'm you know typically is there so any awareness tips that people should have yeah uh give yourself more space between you and the cars around you definitely don't be right on the guy's tail in front of you you're going to need a lot more braking distance if something uh something big happens in front of you and you have to slam on the brakes in in wet weather dry weather you obviously your braking distance are a little shorter i still recommend people give more space people tend to drive way too close to, to other cars uh, be aware <laughs> of your surroundings be aware of what other people are doing you know that's the biggest thing if you can do that and pay attention to just driving uh you'll be a lot safer and you'll be in a lot better position to do something if if, if need be now danny out there at the school at bondurant you guys have also i mean you have race car driver courses you have uh law enforcement and chauffeur courses but you also have these basic driving classes for teen uh driving and, and just every day this type of skid pad and learning basic car control and, and uh Performance driving, I guess, right? It doesn't have to be performance driving. We do. Driving. We do. A lot of times people think we're just a, strictly a racing school, and, and that's one of the facets that we teach there, but it's not everything. We teach everything from the teenager, how to be a better driver on the street, all the way up to the seasoned race car driver preparing for his next race, and everything in between. One of the most important tools that we have down at the school is something that I think every kid should, should drive before they get into a car and get their license, is we have our skid cars down there. Mm. And what that skid car does is it, it trains a driver on how to control a car to get to know a slide. Whether the front wheels lose grip and the car continues to go straight, uh, what we call understeer, or if you're going around a corner and the back end starts to come around you, uh, like a fishtail, we call that the oversteer slide. The most important tool we've got there is that skid car to teach people car feel and learn car control and, and be a better driver when they leave there, whether they're, whether they're on the racetrack trying to get a record lap time or they're just driving on the street trying to be a safe driver. For sure. Well, we, imp- we uh, appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday to uh, give our listeners some tips. And, guys, we've got, we've got a great thing right in our backyard, the Bonnerant School of Driving. Sometimes your kids aren't going to listen to you. Boy, you can take them down there, and they will listen to these guys. So it's a fantastic bring, bring operation. You can always come down to the school and take a tour it's right there at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park, or you can always visit us at www.bonnerant.com. Thanks again, guys. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. We also put a link uh, of the Bonnerant School on the Bumper to Bumper radio page, so you can go there. Uh, and uh, also, while you're there, like us on Facebook. We Which is what, Dave? Bumper to bumper radio dot com. Bumper two t o radio dot com. Well, you know, I thought was bringing back. I've been to one of those Bondurant driving schools, and as a matter of fact, last fall, Dave and I got to spend the day out there with uh, a media day with Chevrolet and some NASCAR drivers doing some some driving. It's quite interesting to to watch them how they handle the car and and, and control the skid car. Just just the ability but he's right just going through that uh i did a one day class once uh several years ago and just some of the little things that you pick up on properly how to hold the steering wheel and and putting your left foot on the you know what they call the dead pedal and and not just having it flopping around there uh looking out where you want to go not where you're going you really need to be looking up and and, and see where you want to go Nice alarm there, Dave. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> Sleep by me. I never knew that before. That's the first time. You do it all the time. But uh, so, yeah, it's just a, a really great program. And then the uh, But the other thing that we did was the Goodyear tire driving thing. And, I mean, you take a good tire. And they, we had identical cars. You put a little bit of water on the road and take an average tire versus a good tire. It is a huge, big huge difference. difference. Big difference. And, you know, and you're, if you're buying tires, and that's the other thing you got to think about right now. It's a great week to talk about it. Wiper blades. My wife says, man, my wiper blades aren't working. 
kind of feel bad because it's always her car that goes out without any love. But this is a great weekend to head up to SNS Tire. We got three locations. There's three SNS locations you can find at bumper to bumper Uh Good tires are a big deal. The rain is not, you know, it's going to rain all winter long. Might as well have good tires and they're ready to go for next summer. Well, good windshield wiper blades. You know, they go bad in Phoenix all the time. Yesterday at the shop, we had a rush of wiper blades. And make sure your window washers are squirted and you're driving around. Maybe it's not raining as much. The roads are still wet. Now you can't clean your windshield. So now's a good time to even use the antifreeze style windshield wash food. And like you said, Dave, check your tires and lights and wipers and and stay safe on the road. We've got wide open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. When we come back, we're helping you with your car. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. It's the most wonderful time of the year, a time for decked halls, roasted chestnuts, and jingle bells. You can make a child's holiday magical this Christmas. The Wigwam and Arizona Biltmore Golf Clubs are partnering with Toys for Tots this holiday season to bring joy and Christmas toys to less fortunate children in the community. Bring an unopened toy or make a donation at either the Wigwam Golf Resort or the Arizona Biltmore Golf Club and receive a $10 merchandise credit to use in the pro shops. Help spread the Christmas cheer this year. Visit azbiltmoregc.com or wigwamgolf.com for more more information. It's really coming down now. And that little voice is saying shoulda, coulda, woulda. You meant to call Keiko Roofing last storm, but you didn't, did you? Now it's raining cats and dogs. And Mr. Shoulda, coulda, woulda is watching a puddle form on the ceiling. If the roof on your home or business is over 10 years old, get rid of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Call Keiko Roofing at 602-944-4600 for a free checkup today. At Keiko, we install peace of mind with the finest materials and and the most skilled workers, all backed by the owner's pride guarantee. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Kaiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. Since 1994, Kaiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs, over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend. For more information and financing options, go to KaikoRoofing.com. Kaiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. There have been so many changes in Phoenix over the past couple of decades, but one thing has not changed in all that time. Kurtz. Family owned and operated, Kurtz Auto Repair has been reliably served servicing and repairing vehicles for Valley car owners for over 24 years. Just one block east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell, Kurtz has done it all with a perfect Better Business Bureau record. For service, call 602-588-2878 or check them out online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio on this uh, kind of chilly and wet Saturday morning. I am Matt Allen. This guy across from me is Dave Riccio, and we were talking about cars today. Anything that, that you want to talk about, you want to get involved in the show, have a question about your car or how to handle it, what to do to it, what to fix on it or what not to, or maybe what to buy. Who knows what you need, but we can help you. And you just give us a call at 602 277 5827 602 Two seven seven K T A R, and we talked briefly, or not briefly. We talked in the whole first segment about driving in this wet weather, and just got to be careful out there. If you weren't uh, tuning in, we had some tips from the Bondurant School. One of the tips that we didn't come up with is stay out of that right lane. I mean, our roads are crowned; all the water's in the right lane. There's going to be more there, and you're hydroplaning more in the right lane than you would be, you know, driving down the middle of the road. So stick in the dry lanes. In yeah, the, that's a good way to suck the water in. I mean, uh, you know. Yep. <laughs> and don't. And the other thing is, uh, you know, don't be that guy that gets stuck in the wash on the five o'clock news, and the helicopter's flying over, and you're sitting on your hood. Don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a stupid motorist law. <laughs> it probably needs to be enforced a little more often. But yeah, that that uh, that won't be good. So up for the segment, we've got Steve in Sun City on a 2004 Toyota 4Runner. Go ahead, Steve. You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, sir. I just uh, had my forerunner in for a, uh, my usual oil change, and they're recommending that uh, it's got 105,000 miles. They're recommending that I get a transmission flush and a uh, differential flush. I've heard varying opinions from different mechanics about that. 
And as some say, if if you're not having a problem, don't get into those because after you get into them, they'll start leaking and such. What's your opinion? Oh, I have a very strong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure, the differential, yes, definitely service the differential. Uh, on a Toyota, a lot of them are drain and fills where you can pull a drain plug and then add some back in. Some have a style where you remove the remove the differential cover and they wash out the inside and put new oil in it. Oil definitely does break down over time. Uh, they're better than they used to be. But, uh, you know, a differential service every 50,000 miles. On the transmission service, a lot of guys are saying don't service them, don't service them, don't service them. But it's, it's bad information, okay? The technology in the transmission hasn't changed all that much in years past. The oil has gotten better. But, uh, you know, at the least, that thing should have been serviced by 50,000 miles. And it's not, hey, if you don't have a problem, don't service it. Well, first of all, services don't fix anything when it comes to transmissions. So that's, that part of it is not good. What we're doing is preventing premature transmission wear out. And you basically want to go 200,000 miles without having to buy a transmission. And if that's what you want to do, absolutely service that transmission. There's a lot of spool valves in there that wear out, you know, as the oil as the oil loses its lubricity. Lubricity? Lubricity. lubricity. Yeah, something like that. It's so. ability to lubricate. But Dave, I think there's a he said to, uh, one key word is flush. You're not flushing the differential. You're, like you said, either drain and fill it. And in those cases, at least at my shop, we always use synthetic fluid. Absolutely. Even if it maybe it didn't require it or not, we still use it. I think it's better protection for the 10 or $15 that costs more than traditional fluid or conventional oil. I, I believe it's definitely the way to go. But you're not flushing anything. And same with the transmission. There's this there's this misconception about a flush and you're hooking up and, and you hear the guys that sell it and say, oh, we're going to shake and get all the dirt out. And it's really more of a transfusion, if anything. You're just using the the pressure of the pump inside the transmission if you're doing a, quote, flush. But you're not really flushing anything. You're just using a bladder to new fluid to push the old fluid out and uh, well the other thing you got to be aware of there is a bottle of transmission flush and you go to some auto shops and the way they do it you know transmission flush or service can mean five different things to five different people in the business but they will literally pull in a pour in a bottle of uh, real heavy additive package and they'll go run around the block to kind of loosen things up and then they'll go ahead and do the service we don't do that we just we know the fluid has already got all those additives in it so we don't need to supercharge it you know, we just do a fluid exchange. It's a very non-invasive way to get good fluid in there and have it do everything it should do. So definitely service it. Great question. So let's go with, looks like, Kelly on a 2006 Ford Taurus. Go ahead, Kelly. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Um, I have no heat in my car. It works for 30, like 30 seconds, and then it blows cold. When, okay, so for startup or when it... When, how long does it take before you get that initial burst of hot air? Um, about three minutes, maybe. Okay. Did your and car? Then, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, and then when it gets when the car gets warm, and when I turn it on, it'll be the air will be kind of warm, and then as the car warms up, then it'll only be warm for like thirty seconds, and then it blows cold. And I had it. In the shop last year, it did the same thing, and they replaced my radio console and my, I don't know what they did, okay. but um, now well, it's doing it again. And well, it worked great last winter, but now it doesn't work again. Okay. Well, I, there's two different things that could be happening here. You're either going to have a control issue, which might be the way I'm leaning based on the, you telling them, telling us that they replaced the radio console. Or I'm just imagining that Taurus has that center section that's the radio, air conditioning controls and such all, all in one unit right there. So you've got to have – but then before you can make – you've got to have hot air first. So you've got, to, you've got to have an engine that's able to produce heat. So sometimes in this time of year we're seeing – cars with the check engine light on or even without a check engine light on if the fuel if the temperature gauge is not getting up to at least halfway if you if you do have a gauge the car is not hot enough if you don't have a gauge and your heater is not working you obviously in your case you could still have an issue with the engine is not getting to operating temperature and creating creating the hot water or a control issue so it's one of those things that uh too many possibilities over the air it's just something that needs to get into a shop and, and verify again Engine getting to operating temperature, and then the control issue to see if the if the controls are actually working. 
Well, Steve's question about maintenance and service, there is so much different information. And you have a lot of different people telling you different things with different motives. And you've got some people that are just super service happy. They sell a service on everything. And maybe there's a profit motive there. You know, they're looking for, a, you know, there's nothing wrong with making profit. But if you're selling it from a profit motive, not necessarily to help your customer, well, that's that's different. That's not that's not the way to go about it. So you have one, and it could be a young, impressional kid that's giving you advice from a, a businessman who's running the business. And then there's some people that really want to service it because they know it's going to save you some money and they're going to see you, you know, year after year after year and you've taken care of their car. And, you know, when you've owned the car for 10 years, it's not a piece of junk because you took care of it. Well, and there's another, I agree with you, Dave. And there's the other important thing is if someone's going to recommend this service to you, they ought to be able to explain to you the benefits of the service the pros and the cons. What's going to happen if we don't do it? Ask the question, what if I wait? Can I wait a little bit? What's the, What would be the, the result of, of not doing this right now and why? And even what does it say in the owner's manual? And those owner's manuals are very good guides. But again, the marketing department kind of dictates a little bit of that. Uh, well, here's so where I think the problem it. lies on transmissions. This is what I honestly think. You got people giving advice on transmissions all the time that have never taken one apart. You know, that's to, to be honest, we're taking them apart. We're seeing the wear. We're seeing what's happening. We're saying, man, these things could really benefit from good fluid, as opposed to running bad fluid in there. Well, and you're getting advice from people that maybe are stuck in the 1970s or 80s. Yes. The tech. Now you said the technology hasn't changed much. I mean, the electronics and all the stuff around the transmission are attaching, but fundamentally, it's still got fibrous clutches in it. It's still got fibrous bands in it. None of that stuff has changed. It still needs good fluids. If anything, they've gotten more complex with more valves in them. More valves that can wear out. I mean, there's so many valves in these valve bodies to fix all the weird little idiosyncrasies that we've been trying to get a hold of for years. So when we come back, we got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are here helping you with your car. We've got open phones at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. And waiting ever so patiently, looks like we've got Ruthie in Gilbert on a 2008 Chevrolet Cobalt. Go ahead, Ruthie. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning. Uh, I'm, in, I'm thinking about buying a 2008 Chevy Cobalt, and it has been stored for probably like three years. It only has 7,000 miles on it. And... Can you tell me what I need to look for for that car sitting like that? What What are my issues? I worry. I worry about the you know all the fluids and stuff. It seems like you know people buy these cars that have been sitting. This one's only been it hasn't been sitting that long. You know, five years with seven thousand miles. Yeah. But, but cars can if you know when people buy cars out of Sun City, I worry about them rotting kind of from the inside out. Well, you know? but it, Ruthie, is the car running now? Uh, I am actually going to go today. Yes, it is running. Uh, it's actually uh, someone who has kind of like a repo type lot, and I kind of know the guy a little bit. And he said he replaced the tires on it because it had been sitting and stuff. But he's kind of looked over and said, you know, all the fluids have to be changed and that kind of thing. But, I mean, it, uh, just visually it looks immaculate. I, I imagine that it is. So I guess the only thing, we always tell people, get your used car checked out before you buy it. This right. is one of those cases, 2008, uh, if it truly has just been sitting. The one thing that you said that triggered me a little bit is the guy has a repo lot or something like that. And and uh, I'd want to look at the title, make sure this doesn't have a salvage title or oh, any others absolutely. wish it. You know, because you can get some of these. There's the Sun City Gem, or maybe the uh, you know Sierra Lakes, or whatever <laughs> that is out right. there in the East Valley, where you might have some of these uh, snowbird gems, if you will. But then sometimes I want to be cautious and go, wait a minute, why is this car got low miles on it? Has has it been wrecked sitting somewhere waiting, and now was just recently replaced? But okay. other than that, Dave, like you said, the I, tires. I literally had a car in my shop, Ruthie. I would definitely. You know, it was a pre-purchase ins inspection that we did this last week, and it was a Volvo, and it had about 8,000 miles on it. We scanned it. It was full of engine codes. It ran rough. I really? mean, there, 
and it had been hit in the front and the back, and there was some body repair done. But it wasn't. It looked good, but the body repair behind it, you could see, you know, just a big old dent in the radiator, and there was other things going on. So okay. I would have somebody check it out other than the guy you're going to buy it from, even as a friend. He, there may be something there he's not aware of. You okay. know, so just to be safe, I think it's good to have someone, you know, put a flashlight on everything and look the thing over real good. So, yeah. One other quick question. I got on the Internet, and it shows that that particular year had a couple recalls. Is there a way for me to find out if those recalled items have been fixed? Yeah, what you can do, I mean, and you got to be careful going on the Internet. You can find anything wrong with anything that you have by searching for it on, on the Internet. But uh, you can do a couple things. You could take it to a dealer. Have the shop that's looking at the car before you buy it. Have them get a general idea. There might be a recall. There might be a campaign. Uh, some of those are important. Some of them aren't. And then the other way you could do is just take the vehicle identification number, the VIN number, and call the dealer. Say, I have this car. Are there any open campaigns or warranty recalls? And are they free? My thing is there's no reason to go there if it's not free. If it's not free, go to your local repair shop, somebody that you have a relationship with there in your neighborhood. And if you don't, bumper to bumper radiocom has got a list of great shops all over the valley. So we're going to go with, thanks so much for the call, by the way. We're going to go with Marie in Queen Creek on a 1998 Ford Taurus. Go ahead, Marie. You're on bumper to bumper radio. Yes, uh, the car, when we're go- uh, warming it up, it Taurus, it takes about 20 minutes. 10 to 15 to 20 minutes before it can get out of part to go reverse or drive. Well, one of the things that, that happens, and especially when the weather changes, is that uh, vehicles will start to get low on fluid. It's been low all along, but when it gets cold, that's when the low fluid really shows up. And Why one, is that, David? Just the fluid's contracting. Contracting. So with, it's going to be. It's going to be lower in the pan. So if it's a little bit low in the summer, it's going to be really low in the winter. So that's one of the things that I would check first. Make sure that thing's full of fluid. To check the fluid level in a transmission, it's got to be warmed up to operating temperature. It's got to be on a level surface. And then you bring the dipstick out and you swipe it clean. And then you put it back in. You know, some people, it's a little bit because transmission fluid is a moving target because it does expand and contract. You definitely want to check it warm after it's been good and warmed up. The other problem that might be going on here is that you could have some damaged seals on the inside of the transmission. And with the weather getting colder, a hard seal is, is what they are. Is it takes the vehicle to warm up for them to get kind of pliable again and to start sealing because it's a hydraulic machine with all kinds of hydraulic passages and clutch drums that need to hold hydraulic pressure. And you, so, s- and you say a leaking seal. Well, you may have an external leak, and that would be a fluid leak onto the ground or something. But when you say a leaking seal, that's internal, and you're never that's never going to produce a leak on the ground. That's like an O-ring or, or some other type of gasket, and, uh, and they get hard, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. But hard seals definitely show up in the wintertime. So right. car runs and runs, and, or you know, it has to run a while before it starts engaging. So if it's not low on fluid... We may very well have a hard seal issue, or both. I mean, twenty minutes. That's that's, that's uh, yeah. That's quite qu- quite a while. So, hey, Marie, thanks so much for the call. Looks like we're gonna go with Scott in Phoenix on a nineteen seventy two Chevelle. Go ahead, Scott. You're on bumper to bumper radio. Hey, how you guys doing today? Fantastic. Good. Uh, question on on, on my uh, Chevelle. My brake lights. They like to uh, come on by themselves. I replace the brake light switch, and when I depress it manually, it works just fine. But it's like I've got some some play in the brake pedal there, where it'll it'll move a little bit and cause the brake lights to come on. Is there any way I can fix that play in there? Like a bushing or something has gone bad in there. I'm not sure the specifics on it, but let's get the. I would remove the pedal assembly altogether and get that thing on a bench, and then you can kind of see what's working. You know, a lot of times you'll have a cracked one where it's 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 not centered because there's a crack in it, so it's warped, and, and the pedal's not quite going the direction it should go. So that's what I would do is get it out and take a look at it. Yeah, that pedal so it might be a little a bit of a bear to get out of there, but there could also be, to take the play out, there could be bushings that are missing. I mean, who knows, in the 1972, uh, how that brake switch actually mounted up to the to the pedal, Dave. It'd be one of those things to maybe get into a uh, restoration catalog or, or uh, and, and see, just make sure that everything that's supposed to be there is actually there, too. For sure. Well, Cooper mentioned that 
you know, hey, do you believe your mechanic when he calls you and tells you there's something wrong with your car? And this made me think of an email this week that we got from Mike and Sarah. Their auto shop called them up. And uh, it's not one that was on our approved list, but just their auto shop. They've been going there for years. They already have a relationship built on trust. And they said, your car is leaking. You know, it's got a leak. And their point was, we haven't seen anything on the ground. Why did they take the car in? Was that an oil change or something? It was or? just routine maintenance. And they, they, they brought this leak to them and said, hey, you know, and uh, hey, they're like, we haven't seen anything on the ground. How can it be leaking? And it shook her trust in a shop she's already had an established relationship with. So at the end of it, she says, can you recommend me a new shop? And I, and I think we're jumping the gun on just going to a new shop. Well, yeah, you're right, David. Yeah, we of course we could recommend you a new shop, and we have uh, do it all the time at bumper to bumper radio dot com. But but don't I think you're getting the cart in front of the horse there. If, if this is a shop where you've been going, and you're not quite clear, Dave, this is a classic example of maybe not miscommunication, but not enough communication to really understand what's happening. I mean, I could picture the phone call. Hey, Sarah, it's. Uh, Joe Blow at the shop, you know, you've got this uh, leak fixed. Well, gee, I don't see any leak. Yeah, but you have one. Well, I don't see it, so never mind. Thanks. Okay, and they just, you know, hang up the phone. That's a, you know, <laughs> quick and dirty version. It, but maybe it's something like, Sarah, you have this leak. Oh, I don't see it. Well, the reason you don't see it is because you have a tray or you have a shield or you have something under the car. These cars have so many different uh, covers and skid plates and, and – uh, and, and different shields underneath and that a lot of times that that's where the leak is captured so it's a case of of communicating go down and say you know mr shop can you show me so i understand there's no reason to, to get a breakup over this right <laughs> right <laughs> a breakup well you know the, the thing that i try and get shops to do more and more is just have definitions for what a leak is because someone says it's leaking the next mechanic he didn't see a leak. Well, it's not an active leak, so nothing's leaking. But the next guy sees some oil growing around a seal. That's that's a leak that we're just going to monitor in the future because it's not a leak yet. It's maybe something's developing, but it's not anything to do anything about now. So I came up with a definition scale. And by the way, if you're not a shop and you need one, it's you know it's one through five. Five being the worst, one being eh, not really a leak. It just defines it, so it helps your communication with your customers. But you can ask that: is it is it dripping? Would it be hitting the ground? Is it something I need to can be concerned about? And a good question for you as the consumer is: was it low on fluid? So let's say it's a power string leak. Well, was it low on fluid? You know, it wasn't low on fluid. Well, that right there starts to tell me, okay, we're not dealing with as severe of a leak. Now, the other thing to be aware of, if it's a, a component that only holds two quarts of oil, any leak could be a big leak, you know, versus something that holds five quarts of oil. And, and Well, for example, though, you could have a valve cover gasket on a, let's just pick a V6 Toyota engine, holds six or seven quarts of oil in some cases. And I'll tell you what, a little bit of oil goes a long way. I mean, you could take eight ounces of oil. In the grand scheme of things, that doesn't seem like a lot. But you take eight ounces of dirty oil and go pour it in your driveway. It <laughs> spreads out pretty good. See what kind of mess that makes. So it doesn't have to be that low in certain circumstances. And the other thing that's happening is maybe that oil is not making it to the ground quite yet. Or maybe it is. it would if it weren't for that shield there. But oil and fluids will get on other things. It can ruin a motor mount and, and uh, other bushings. But, Dave, this takes us to, uh, you know, we're going to talk next week about reviews and online reviews. Mm -hmm. Is this the making of uh, potentially a bad review? Yeah, they've been great for years, but all of a sudden they lied to me. And maybe they didn't. You know, maybe there's – let's just make sure – that we really have an issue before we, we go doing that. And I think it's a great topic. How do you interpret reviews? What do you do with reviews? Are they accurate? You know. So anyway, when we come back, we've got Mary, Wayne, and Charles, and maybe time for one more at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. There have been so many changes in Phoenix over the past couple of decades, but one thing has not changed in all that time. Kurtz, family owned and operated, Kurtz Auto Repair has been reliably servicing and repairing vehicles for Valley car owners for over 24 years. Just one block east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell, Kurtz has done it all with a perfect Better Business Bureau record. For service, call 602-588-2878 or check them out online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. 
Yes, it's really coming down now. And that little voice is saying shoulda, coulda, woulda. You meant to call Keiko Roofing last storm, but you didn't, did you? Now it's raining cats and dogs. And Mr. Shoulda, coulda, woulda is watching a puddle form on the ceiling. If the roof on your home or business is over 10 years old, get rid of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Call Keiko Roofing at 602-944-4600 for a free checkup today. At Keiko, we install peace of mind with the finest materials and the most skilled workers, all backed by the owner's pride guarantee. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Keiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Keiko has you covered. Since 1994, Keiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs, over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend. For more information and financing options, go to KaikoRoofing.com. Keiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. We loved our Prius, but eight years later, it had lost its zip and fuel economy. The dealer told us the only answer was to replace the battery to the tune of four to six thousand dollars. Ouch! Then we found the hybrid shop at Goodworks Auto Repair. For a fraction of the cost, they conditioned the battery like new. The zip is back, and we're once again over 40 mpg. We're ecstatic. A hybrid owner's dream come true. Check out the hybrid shop at GoodworksAutoRepair.com. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen along with Dave Riccio. And as usual, every Saturday from 11 to noon, we are helping you with your car or cars. You did not seem sure about what your name was when you said it. Uh, I'm Matt Allen. Matt Allen today. Uh, (laughs) I'm not using my alias today, Dave, so... Hey, you know, one thing I wanted to, to mention, too, we talked about some cold weather conditions a couple weeks ago with the low tire lights on and, and the rain today and driving. Uh, but this is the time of year when the cats are crawling up underneath the hoods of the cars and <laughs> getting on the top of the tires. So maybe it's, uh, you know, if you have a carport and you don't want cat stew. What is that What is that sound, <laughs> Sam? What is, it, what is the sound when the cat just sleeps in your engine's co- you know cooling fan? It's like... <laughs> something like that dave you may not be making any friends out there with uh with my public service announcement here going the wrong way but maybe give a tap on the hood my sister has a cat that uh we named grease monkey that we actually rescued out from underneath the hood of a car the car was driven in the lady says there's this weird noise under my car and we go out there it's the car's meowing, you know? Uh, Lou Romano so. <laughs> had a great story about uh, pets underneath the bumper of the car. So, so be cautious. W- one of the other ways you can get a hold of us is text us at 411-923. We got a text here from Henry Williams, who's a very brave individual, uh, was teaching a young kid how to drive stick for two hours in the rain, and he learned what tire spin was all about. So uh, I remember that, that learning to drive stick. You know, they kind of let the clutch out a little bit, then they jerk it out all the way and. You get a little whiplash. You gotta put your neck brace on well, before you go. Today's a good day, maybe. <laughs> you know, you can you can have that little Toyota or whatever you have, and and let off the clutch. And if you just pin the throttle, it'll just wheel spin instead of uh, instead of stalling the car or jerking along like that Subaru commercial. You see that one? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love when it rains and I love driving. And one of the things I do, and I think people should do more of this, maybe in a parking lot. But if I'm driving down a main road and it's raining, I just love to pin the brakes to see what happens. Just do it. You know, no one's around. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, it, but but you know what the, what it's going to do? Go to the mall parking lot when it's wide open on Sunday morning. There's nobody there, security guards that you can play with, and just go along it at, at uh, you know across that lot where and it was soaking wet, and just let go of the steering wheel if you have a car with analog brakes, and stand on the brakes, and you're going to feel a couple things. The the wheel is shouldn't jerk out of your hand, or the car should go perfectly straight actually under braking. It's not going to. Go, Dave and his e-cigarette. Jeez. You don't have to know that. (laughs) Well, they hear you over here toking away, and I want to at least let them know what it is so they don't have to wonder. (laughs) So, uh, But get that. that, And then the other sensation on the analog brakes is that brake pedal is going to come flying back up at you. You're pushing down on the pedal, and it's pushing up back at you. Don't let off the brake. Just super startling. Stay on it if you want to stop. And uh, But, yeah, it's a good idea to go see how that works in the parking lot. It's fun, too. Well, we're going to go with Wayne in Mesa on a 2000 Buick Century. Go ahead, Wayne. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks a lot. Hey, um, this, this vehicle of mine, um, it has 120,000 miles. And when I drive it, like, not 
when it gets hot, and not just warm, hot, like maybe driving um, 30, 40 miles, uh, the shifting just is real hard. Every shift is just bump, bump. Um, you know anything? I, and I've never had the transmission flush. I don't know if this would help it. but um, Well, it won't help it, actually. And I know exactly what's going on. In 2000, Buick Century... Uh, that was when GM was moving away from vacuum modulators and going electronic pressure control. And in that transmission, what happened was the EPCs weren't working so good. There's actually a technical service bulletin about it. But they're really well known for setting a P1811 code. And they're not going to set it when you go from here to the grocery store. They're going to set it when you get out on the freeway and drive a long ways. And what an 1811 code is, max adapt or long shift. In definition, it's the transmission slipping a little bit, but nothing that you would feel. So what happens when the computer recognizes a slip? It takes that EPC and turns the valve wide open. <laughs> now it's at full pressure, and all the shifts are going to be hard. Well, you're going to get to where you're going. You're going to turn the car off, and it's going to come out of the active, the active programming. So pressure is what determines how hard or how the engagement of the shift. So the engagement higher shift. pressure, harder, more positive engagement. Right? And the other thing you may not notice, Wayne, is that there's a little bit of buzzing because the pump is now working double time. So it's kind of got a little buzz to it. So that's what's going on. If the transmission is good and solid, that EPC can be changed out. You know, if you're lucky, and that's a good time to do the service. But I wouldn't do a service to fix anything. Well, and that came up earlier. We were talking, Dave, about repairing transmissions and such. And and it would make no sense, and you have to be cautious. And in the same way in our shop, you know, my technicians will say, well, or the customer, well, maybe we should service it first. No. That's like getting your car broken into and then going and washing it before you call the police to do the fingerprints. That fluid that's in there is going to tell the transmission technician a story potentially. Absolutely. So don't go get rid of all the evidence because what we said earlier, maintenance doesn't fix problems. You might get lucky and have a plug filter that gets changed by virtue of a service and it kind of got lucky. But just don't go jumping into changing the fluid. It, it used to be more common, I need a cooling system flush. Why? Well, my car is overheating. Well, yeah, flushing not... the cooling system isn't going to fix whatever. Well, it you might. got lucky if it happened to be low on fluid and by, by, by means of the coolant service, and now it's full and now it's not overheating. But that isn't, we got to find a leak, you know, yeah. if it's low on coolant. Or we've changed the radiator cap or just something happened to get done. But again, the, it's important. Maintenance doesn't fix problems. It prevents them. Well, thanks so much for the call, Wayne. We're going to go with Charles in Cave Creek. Looks like he's got a Ford Escape. Go ahead, Charles. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning, guys. Um, make a long story short, I changed my spark plug uh, Thursday. I did the uh, road test uh, drive, and everything went fine. It started the first, uh, the first uh, click. Uh, went to work yesterday, drove about 20 miles. As God knows, it was rainy yesterday. And uh, this morning, I am uh, get back in the truck to start it, and it will not start. It only clicks. Hmm. Just uh, you turn the key. The... Click, click. Yeah I, th- yeah, I turn the key, and all I hear are click, 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 click. Well, I think the immediate thing to want to do is to relate the spark plug change to the work we just did on the car. And chances are those are two totally different symptoms, and PASA would go down. What are you thinking, Matt? Well, that's what I was going to say is don't be so quick to think that maybe you made a mistake. But it's good that we know the story, what he did leading up. This yes. is a conversation in the shop. I, re- I changed these spark plugs and such. But I don't believe that there's anything through the course of just changing the spark plugs that is going to have anything to do with with uh, the car not starting, possibly a weak battery or something like that. So it is likely just very coincidental. You may start with a jump start. Make sure you have good connections on the battery. But, Dave, can, I mean, I don't know what you're grinning about. I'm thinking, can you imagine how this story goes in the oh, shop? Oh, yeah. I, it happens you know, all the time. You we, guys did we my spark fix someone's transmission, week. and now the stereo doesn't work, you know, two days later. And what did you guys do to my car? You know, you guys jumped it, or you guys did something that caused the stereo to go out. Some of these things are just plain coincidental. But I think that causes some of the mistrust that comes from auto repair. So be aware. You know, we get in a car and we go to move the seat back so we can get in and the seat motor quits working. And, you know, we got to bring it back to them. And, you know, they can't get their seat back. And we broke their seat. You know, all of a sudden we're this offender. But no, no one. we got better things to do than break seats. Uh, you know, if my guy got in and was real abusive to the seat, I could see something like that. But power window or power mirrors, power windows, power seats. 
power, tilt, steering, that stuff breaks. It just it did a break on that guy. So, uh, you know, this was a coincidence, but that happens to us on a regular basis in the shop. Yeah, but but uh, back to Charles' question, though. Well, I don't know what the question was. <laughs> I doubt it has anything to do with it. Click, you, click. I'm click, thinking click. starter battery type issue. Yeah, you start with the jump, trying to jump start the car, be cautious. That's one of the other things in this type of weather. You might get people leaving lights on a lot and, and doing those. Uh, anything that might, uh, you know, the cold weather just takes and, and taxes that battery. We don't see the cold very often, so you get to that extreme that we might have in Phoenix. And uh, somebody might be asking you for a jump start. You need to be careful when you're doing these things. Look in your owner's manual. I always like to turn on the headlights so you have some kind of surge protection possibly. Uh, so just you know, just be careful and don't ruin your car at the same time trying to help somebody else. In your Chevy truck, I'm just answering a text, blew out the drive shaft. Yes, you can drive it home in four high, but it's limited use only. So definitely get you homes. Well, thanks for joining us. If you're looking for a great shop, Bumper to BumperRadio.com. We are there. Be sure to like us on Facebook. You can find a link to the Bondurant School of Driving on our page. And uh, be looking there more and more because that, that site what is, page is that, Dave? our webpage, Bumper to BumperRadio.com. Oh, okay. They got a picture of you that they need to take off because I'm the looks here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thanks, Peter, boy. for running the dials. Remember never to text and drive. And next week I'll be wearing stretchy pants because I'm recovering from Turkey Day.